Okay. Next, we're going to talk about simple in distributions, and let's talk about simple means. <coughs> let's consider the following uh, story. Suppose I run a factory and I produce bags of candies. Ideally, each bag should weigh two kilograms. And because I know my production process probably is not perfect, so there may be some fluctuation. In that case, I still believe or I still hope that the 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 process is somewhat under control. So hopefully, a bag of candies should weigh in between one point eight and two point two kilograms. So I allow some fluctuation, but should not be too serious. Suppose I take x as the weight of a bag of candy. I know it's somewhat random, so I probably want to understand this process. Then I have capital X. Let's say mu and sigma as its expected value and standard deviation. Then probably I want to ask a few questions like, is mu equals two? In that case, my process、uh, is good. Or is mu within 1.8 and 2.2? In that case, my、um, process is also considered good. I certainly understand that as long as there is sigma, there is some、uh, randomness. Then the process, then there may be some candy bags that are not within the quality standard. But at least I hope my mu is within 1.8 and 2.2. So. To answer these questions, I probably want to do some samples. So I probably want to get one bag of candy. If I see it weighs two point one kilogram, may I conclude that my mu is within one point eight and two point two? Probably not, because we all know that it's just one bag. It's just one sample, and there is no reason to conclude that mu is really within one point eight and two point two. What if the sample size is larger? If it's ten, then is that okay? If that's fifty, if that's one hundred, if I get one hundred、uh, bags and their sample mean is within one point eight and two point two, can I conclude anything? Or how about fifty? How about ten? We have no idea, right? So that's why we need to study、uh, population、uh, sample distrib sampling distribution. We need to understand the distribution. Of sample means, so that when we see a value of sample mean, we can infer the population. Okay, so that's our、um, target. So in、uh, in this lecture, basically we will focus only on the sample mean, and we're going to derive or to understand the distribution of sample mean. For all other statistics like、uh, sample variance,、uh, sample median, sample max, sample mean, whatever, most of them do have some、um, distributions. But we are not a mathematics course, so we're not going to ask you to memorize all of them. Let me just try to use sample mean as an example to illustrate the concept. As long as you know the concept, then understand other things are not too difficult. Okay, so let's start. I'm going to define x bar as my sample mean, which is the sum of all those values in my sample divided by n. Okay, so there is no、uh, nothing really special. Here I use capital X i to denote that all the values in a sample is random. Because we take a random sample, and therefore we have no idea what will be x one, what will be x two. That's why it is、uh, random, and that's why we use capital、um, symbols to denote the random variables. For x bar,、uh, well, some textbook would use capital x bar, but there are also many textbooks using small case,、uh, lower case x bar. So we're going to follow that particular、uh, way to do that. <coughs> Sometimes we would write x bar n to emphasize that the m sample size is n. So when you see this, we know that the sample size is exactly n. If we if we see just x bar, we need to read the paragraph. We always assume that all the values all the values in a sample are independent. For and、um, to each other, okay. So that means whether I draw this one is not going to affect my probability of drawing that one. 
This would be fine. This would be a reasonable assumption if our sample size is much smaller than the population size. Okay, we 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 do need this, especially when we do sampling without this replacement. Okay, and in practice, we need n to be less than or equal to five percent. If we have this, then we can safely say, hmm. This is fine, and x i and x j are independent from each other. Okay, so now, uh, suppose the population mean and the population variance are mu and the sigma square respectively. We know that these two numbers are fixed, and they exist somewhere we don't know, but they are fixed. Now, we also know that our x bar is a random variable. So that's why we want to find its expected value and its variance. And if we have the variance, we do have the standard deviation. Now there is one important thing: is that for any random variable, those expected value or variance or standard deviation are again fixed values. Okay. So we want to find these fixed values. This will be denoted as mu x bar. Sigma square x bar and sigma x bar, okay. They are not random variables. They are fixed values to be determined. Now we have a very useful and very important theorem. Is that for any population, we have the following relationship between the mean and the standard deviation of a sample mean and the population. So let me give you a size n random sample from a population with mean mu and the variance sigma square. Then, as long as I know mu and the sigma square and n, I'm going to be sure that for my sample mean, the mu is still the same. The sigma square the variance is the population variance divided by n, and The standard deviation is, of course, the square root of the sample, uh, the variance of the sample mean. Okay, so this proposition or this theorem is telling us how to find the mean and the variance and the standard deviation of a sample mean for any population, for any population. Okay, so we're not going to prove that this is true. But we're going to give you some examples showing that this makes sense. Okay, and before we do that,、uh, intuitively think about the following things. We're saying that the population, the sample mean, is expected to be the population mean. Okay, which makes sense, right? And also for the sample mean, we expect it to be somewhat random. But the degree of randomness would be smaller than the population. So let's see why is that. Suppose I roll dice, and suppose I have one fair dice. Then I know the probability of rolling a dice and getting one, two, three, or five, or seven.、Uh, no, seven. No, six. It's just one over six. Okay. And I can also calculate the mean and the standard deviation. These are Population mean and the population variance and the population standard deviations. Okay, so this can be calculated according to the materials we gave to you in the previous、uh, week. Okay, so all this can be done. Now this is for a population. Today I roll a dice. I'm going to have this. Tomorrow I roll another dice. I'm going to again have this. I have the distribution of x. As a random variable, and I have its mean. I have its standard deviation. Okay. Now, let's talk about the simple mean of rolling a dice. Suppose I define x bar two as x one plus x two divided by two. Okay. That means I roll the dice twice and find its value. Ah,、uh, find their values and find the mean. The theorem says that. If I do so, I still expect to see x bar two to be three point five. Okay, so the expected value of x bar two is three point five. 
according to the theorem. <coughs> and also, the standard deviation of x bar 2 can be calculated according to this uh, formula. And here, n is just 2, so we're going to get around 1.2. So here are some interpretations. Uh, first, we expect x bar to be around 3.5. That makes sense, right? Because if we um, roll a dice twice and s calculate their, var uh, their mean, obviously it would be around 3.5. What's more important is that for x bar 2, the standard deviation would be less than the population standard deviation. So why is that? It says that the variability of x bar 2 is smaller than that of x, okay, because your uh, standard deviation is smaller for this random variable. And that random variable, the first one has a smaller standard deviation, that means the variability is smaller. For example, uh, for x, we can calculate its probability for x to be extremely large. Here we define it as greater than or equal to 5. We know the probability is 1 over 3 because we require x to be 5 or 6. For x bar 2, what's that probability? Well, we need x1, x2 to be 4, 6, 5, 5, 6, 4, or 5, 6, 6, 5, or 6, 6. And these 6 outcomes out of 36 possibilities together gives us 1 over 6 as my probability. So that means x, uh, x bar 2 is hard to be larger than 5. And of course, it would be also be hard to be smaller than 2, something like that. So that just means, well, for x bar 2, it's more likely that its value would be around 3.5. So the variability is smaller. And the intuition is clear, because to have a large value of x bar 2, we need both values to be large, right? And it's obviously harder, obviously harder. If we do it four times and calculate x bar 4, then we would have another sample mean with a larger sample space, a sample size. In that case, the mean would still be 3.5, and the standard deviation of x bar 4 now would be even smaller. It's 0.8. 54. Okay, and we know that's obviously true because when we have x bar 4, the variability is also smaller than that of x bar 2. Because if we want a large x bar 2 or a small x bar 2, x bar 4, we need almost all the values to be large, which is again too difficult. So we have a general conclusion. As long as we have a population and we collect some values from it, then we have a sample. For that sample, we calculate sample mean. And the sample mean is a random variable. Okay? In that case, if we have one sample with size n and then the other one with size m, then for the two sample means, if n is greater than m, so I have a sample with a larger sample size, then for that random variable, its randomness would be smaller. It will have a smaller standard deviation. Okay, so now let's consider another example. This is about um, quality inspection. So we had that our example about uh, bags of candies, right? So let's say I have a, a process and the population follows a normal distribution with mean 2 and a standard deviation 0 0.2, okay? So that means my production process is somewhat uh, random, and some would be greater than 2, some would be smaller than 2, but the weight is a normal distribution with mean 2 and a standard deviation 0 0.2. Okay, now let's assume that there is a quality control officer the officer would come to my production plant and the sample four bags and calculate the sample mean. And this officer will punish me if x bar is not within 1.8 and 2.2. I'm interested in knowing the probability for that to happen. 
I want to know what's the probability for my、um, production process to be considered bad. Okay, so note that my production process is actually good because mu is actually two. But there is obviously some probability for me to be punished because it is not perfect. So if I am unlucky, then I would be punished. So I want to calculate this probability. If x bar is within one point eight and two point two, I will not be punished. So I want to calculate the probability, uh, one minus the probability that I am not punished. Okay. So given this. I want to calculate a probability, but if I do not know the distribution of x bar, then it would be hard for me to do that. Okay, even though I know mu is two, sorry, mu x bar is two, even though I know sigma x bar is zero point one, even though I have those numbers, I still need the population distribution of x bar. I need to know whether it is normal, uh, uniform, or anything else. Okay, so that's the topic in the next video. Thank you.